In this video, we will review the rules of integers. We will start with adding integers. When both of the numbers have the same sign, all you have to do is take the numbers, add them up, and then keep the sign. So if you look at the, the problems on the top, I would take 4 plus 5, keep the same sign, I add them up, and I get 9. This is like when you were in kindergarten and you were adding 1 plus 2. You were basically doing the same thing. You were adding the numbers and keeping the sign. It was just a positive number. Now the next one, they're both negative numbers. So we have negative 7 plus negative 3. So I add 7 plus 3, which is 10, and since they're both negative, my answer is negative 10. So the difference when we have different signs is that this time I am going to subtract the numbers and keep the sign of the larger number. <clears throat> so with my examples, the first one I have negative 2 plus 8. So one's a negative, one's a positive. So I subtract the two numbers, 8 and 2, so I would get 6. And then the positive number, which is 8, is the larger number, so my answer is going to be positive. With the next one, I have 3 plus negative 11, so it's opposite signs. And I subtract the numbers, 11 minus 3, so I get 8. And then the larger number is a negative number, so my answer is going to be negative. Next, we'll go through how to subtract integers. When you subtract integers, one strategy that you could use is to change it to an addition problem. So if I'm going to do that, you could do three steps that are listed right here. I first want to leave that first number alone. I'm going to be changing the subtraction sign or that minus sign to an addition sign or a plus sign and then I take the opposite of the second number. So you can see right here, that's what we've done. Leave the two, negative 200 alone. This changes to an addition sign. And then the 20, you have to take the opposite of it, so you get negative 20. So negative 200 plus negative 20 is the same thing as negative 200 minus 20. It's just easier now because I can use my addition rules to solve it. And if you think about it, in this situation, um, isn't taking away $20 the same thing as adding negative $20? So if I'm looking at this one, 200 minus 20. It's like this fine lady here started the account with $200 and then she took away two, 20 more dollars. Or you could say it this way. She started with in the account with $200, and then she added a $20 debt, and that's how it's negative 20. So either way that you write it, it's the same thing, just a different way of thinking about it. So here are four subtraction examples. I want you to pause me, try to do the four, and then turn me back on to see if you got the correct answers. So I know that I have to change all of these to an addition or a plus sign, and I'm taking the opposite of all these numbers in the third column. So the opposite of 15 would be a negative 15. Opposite of negative 90 is going to be a positive 90. Opposite of 34 is a uh, negative 34, and opposite of 37 is a negative 37. Now I can just go about and use my, my um, addition rules to solve it. So with the first one, I have negative 12 plus negative 15. So they have the same sign, they're both negative, so I just add them up, 12 plus 15, which is 27, and they're both negatives, so my answer is negative. Number two, I have 10 plus a positive 90, so that's just 10 plus 90. Two positives, I add them up, 100, my answer is positive. 
Third one is 25 plus negative 34. This time I have opposite signs, so I'm going to subtract the numbers. 34 minus 25, and that would be 9. And then I can see that 34 is the, the negative 34 is a larger number, so my answer is going to be negative because I had more negatives than positives. And the final one, negative 100 plus negative 37. They're both negative numbers, so I just add up 137, which is 137. And since they were the same sign and they're both negatives, my answer is also a negative. So hopefully you got those four answers as well. Finally, we're going to talk about how to multiply and divide integers. Here are four examples of multiplying and dividing integers. The important thing to remember when you're multiplying and dividing integers is that if you have the same sign, you are going to have a positive answer. If you have a different sign with the two numbers, that means that you are going to have a negative answer. So looking at these examples, we'll go through them. And if I do negative 4 times 8, they're opposite signs or different signs, so I know my answer is going to be negative. And then 4 times 8 is 32. Negative 9 times negative 7. Those have the same sign, so my answer is positive. And 9 times 7 is 63. Now on to the division. Negative 63 divided by 7. They're different signs, so then my answer is going to be negative, and that would be a 9. And then negative 42 divided by negative 6. They're the same sign, so my answer is positive, and my answer would be a positive 7. So sometimes you're not always going to have just two numbers that you're multiplying. Um, like for these, I have negative 2 times 3 times negative 5 times 2. Um, so if I do that, I could go and I could say, okay, negative 2 times 3, do it two at a time, and say negative 6, and then I take negative 6 times negative 5, and that's going to give me a positive number, 30, and then 30 times this final 2, which is 60. So I get a positive answer there. And then if I do this one, I could do the same thing go step by step and say negative 5 times negative 2, which is 10. Um, negative 10 times the negative 1, which is going to be 10, a positive 10. And then I have to take it 10 times that 2. So 10 times 2, which is 20. And I screwed up somewhere. And I screwed up right here. So that would have been a positive 10. And then I need that to be a negative 10, that to be a negative 10, and this to be a negative answer. We all make mistakes. I seem to make them quite a bit. So what I do when I am um, multiplying a whole bunch of numbers is I actually look first to see how many negatives there are, and that's how I caught my mistake um, in the second problem. So I look at the first one, and I got a positive answer. Got 60. Well, I had two negatives. If I look at the second one, I get a negative answer. And see how I had three negatives in that one? So you could say that if I have um, an odd number of negatives, the answer is going to be, just like with this one, it's going to be negative. And like with the top one, if I have an even number of negatives, I know that my answer is going to be positive. 
doing this just helps me so that I don't mess up with the sign of the answer. So I can look at these three problems and right away I could just tell is my answer going to be positive or negative. So I want you to look at these three and just think in your head, is my answer positive or negative? So for number one, I count up my negatives. I have one, two, three. So I know my answer is going to be negative. With the second one, I have one, two. So I know my answer is positive. For the third one, I have one, two, three, four. So that four is an even number, so my answer is positive. And then once I do that, Really what I do is I just basically ignore all of the signs and kind of pretend that they're not there and just do the multiplication. So for instance, if I was doing number one, all I would have to do is say, okay, two times three, that's six times five, that's 30, and then 30 times one is 30. So I know that my answer is 30, and I had already figured out that it's going to be a negative 30. So I kind of do it step by step so that I don't mess up with the sign of the number.